Welcome to Executive Insights Podcast. My name is Helene Koppel. I'm the Director of Enterprise Strategy for AWS. With me today is Mr. Prabhaka Apana. He's the SVP and Head of AWS Ecosystems for HCL Tech. Prabhaka, why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself, your role at HCL Tech, and your partnership with AWS? Thank you. Thank you, Eliana. Pleasure to be here. Um, I lead the AWS business unit at HCL Tech. I've been with HCL Tech for the last uh, three plus years, close to you know 27 years of uh, overall experience. I set up the uh, AWS business unit within HCL Tech three years back. So we had uh, three competencies when I started, and today we have 36 competencies um, among the top four now. And uh, with, not only with the with respect to the solutions, service delivery programs, certifications, industry experience, industry certifications as well, we have significantly improved and elevated our position in terms of uh, skills and capabilities. And uh, we are rapidly um, increasing our talent-based, technology-based. Um, we roughly have close to 35,000 people uh, trained on AWS technologies. So uh, we are a premium consulting partner with mm -hmm. uh, AWS. And uh, we have also done some strategic collaboration agreements with AWS, which, no, which positions HCL Tech in the market quite strong. Um, one is on our ISV program. The beauty of HCL Tech is we are not only a uh, technology partner, but we are also an ISV partner. In terms of strategic collaborations, we have done um, you know, strategic collaboration agreement on generative AI. And we are one among uh, the uh, first system integrators to sign the agreement and drive those conversations within our client and industry vertical units. So overall, um, the progress has been great. We are growing at a rapid pace. We are significantly enhancing our skills and capabilities. And especially considering the data and generative AI focus, we are in the forefront of those conversations uh, from an HCL tech perspective in the market. Wow, that's really impressive growth and really wide range of partnership. As you're developing these initiatives, what has stood out for you in different industries in their generative AI journey? Generative AI has been a, a major focus area from an HCL Tech perspective. If you look at uh, the way we approach generative AI from an HCL Tech is uh, quite different and holistic in nature. Number one, um, before we latch on to the generative AI more from uh, AI perspective, it is very fundamental to define our data strategy. And uh, we define the security strategy and then build on top of the data and the security um, uh, with a sustainability angle, the generative AI conversation. So when we approach in a holistic manner uh, for the clients, those drive internally many facets of discussions. Number one being, obviously, the AWS Generative AI technologies enable us to drive more conversations with our client base. Um, if, you, if you look at Gen AI conversations, we are, as I said, we are number one in the strategy collaboration agreement on Generative AI. Um, we have a certified pool of people who drive uh, the Generative AI conversations from an AWS perspective within our client landscape. And uh, in, in, in terms of the market, uh, we, from an APJ perspective, we are one of the uh, launch partners on the generative AI uh, as well. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's holistic in nature, and as well as it also underpins our strategy to drive more conversations in a holistic manner. So we mm -hmm. have certain frameworks that we potentially bring to the table mm -hmm. and accelerated story to drive more of these conversations uh, within our client community. And it's the number one focus is what I can say uh, from, from a client context. Beyond technology, right? So we talk very often on technology process and organization um, in order to really drive forward a transformation. Um, so what about organization in terms of skill sets um, for generative AI? And skill sets in terms of our customers and how do you help them upskill? It's, it's the fundamental aspect, uh, if, if you see. Many of the customers want to understand how they can use generative AI in their context, yeah. right? It's very paramount for a system integrator like us to uh, bring the efficiencies of generative AI and position them um, you know, for the client advantage. Number one is, as you said, skill set is quite important. Number two is the business context that you would like to work. 
what is the context around so it is is it healthcare it is clinicians it is uh, manufacturing retail auto financial services insurance fraud security so the various dimensions in terms of we operate and build those business use cases so initially the conversation starts with building a poc and prototype based on the business use case and whether whether the uh, the business actually looks at and for for the uh, um for those various advantages of the business use case what typically happens is the skill set comes a little later in terms of building that capability but we as a system integrator brings those skill set for the client mm-hmm. advantage so we have mm-hmm. a pool of customers who have uh, whom with whom we work so we in, initially we position these generative ai business use cases with the customers work with them identify the case and identify the areas where it could really benefit the customer and be a value add let me take an example of uh, a case where um, you know patient healthcare mm-hmm. where the clinicians uh, spend more time with the patient and many of this clinic uh, uh, clinical staff uh, doesn't have an integrated uh, view of looking at the patient healthcare so a minute yeah. spent on research is a minute taken away from a patient healthcare yeah so how can uh, uh, you enable this clinical staff to have access to the better data integrate that with your regulatory integrate that with your uh, compliance integrate that with your various departments you know um, and bring that data and uh, provide the data for the clinicians is has been a tremendous success for us so we have implemented such business use cases I absolutely concur because uh I work in uh, healthcare before uh for both Johnson and Johnson and Bayer and one challenge is definitely really bringing that knowledge about um patients um medical history and regulatory um and compliance and all in a way of a secure and respecting privacy is always the challenge and what you mentioned absolutely resonate there you go so so we have cases like this so that has been uh one of the business use cases and the insurance the fraud segment and as well as yeah. and we 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 have we have done a very unique uh, case for a banking uh, customer uh within europe market where the bank wants to understand the energy performance rating okay mm-hmm. which which we call it as yep. an epc uh before granting any mortgage or loan uh to the end customer so they wanted to understand how sustainable uh their finance is going to be yep. um and in and looking at the epc so this requires quite a lot of system integrations and looking at the regulatory looking at uh, the performance ratings of those commercials and the and the uh, property real estate mm-hmm. and uh, so that the bank can actually lend to those people who demonstrate that you know uh, from a via a sustainable finance so we do we do see a lot of such uh, business use cases which we are currently building and productionizing and uh, obviously the skill set is uh, paramount in that so while we uh, the partnership with aws helps us to not only train and certify our own staff but we also use that to train and get the client staff certified as well so there are engagements training enablement activities that we do we not only train ourselves but we also train and enable the the client community yeah you know uh, in terms of making them self sustained for a long term future yeah and um so i think that again that hcl and um uh, aws have very similar approach of not start from the technology but start from what are the opportunities and business contacts and and customer problems right so we're working backwards to find the right solution and so what you said about you know it's not just about skill sets it's also about bringing that business strategy and context what would be your suggestion for leaders to adopt their culture in order to increase their innovation productivity with generative ai i think my uh, suggestion would be based on my interactions with various cios and the the cdos uh, and the director community who actually are uh, hands and feet on the ground mm-hmm. um, um you know delivering those services uh, when the topic of generative ai comes in people focus on automation people focus on okay I, how can i reduce the cost how can i be uh, uh more efficient in the service right so um initial the conversation starts in that way my uh, suggestion always has been to the cxo community is to look from a long term business perspective i think every business needs to understand on which direction they would like to head um you know this technology will be an enabler 
but the business if it is not helping the business um you know uh, position themselves in a way that they want to um, uh, excel then this might not work so obviously you need to know what are those typical challenges you would like to resolve number 2 how sustainable is this engagement for your business mm-hmm. right so, you know you, you don't want to you know simply adopt generative ai just because every 90% of the population are talking right so you don't yeah. do it Correct. whether it is helpful for you or not is something that you would obviously need to look at number 3 is the cost factor obviously um you know that that's an important factor as well in terms of looking at where they would like to implement how it is beneficial how mm. you know how it is going to drive their business uh scale in certain opportunities mm-hmm. uh, definitely number 4 before you embark on generative ai conversations you need to look at uh the nature and uh, how the it landscape is set up in your in your organization many of the people don't realize but uh, it it's quite disintegrated in terms of the data strategy so yeah. you need to get your data strategy right if you don't have the right data no matter you drive generative ai the output is going to be the same so you need to you know to spend more time on aligning and um, you know creating that data uh, stra- you know strategy obviously underpinned by the security right so which plays a key important role um and hence what hcl tech has done in this segment obviously with the partnership uh, of uh, aws is we have uh, put our 30 40 years ex- experience and building an accelerated journey for the clients so that the client can focus on the business aspect of it and we focus on the technology enablement as, uh, or you know aspect which means that uh, we have um, uh, uh, you know a specific tooling that we have developed and more, it, it is much more industrialized uh, in a fashion now which is called as an ai force and we are demonstrating that uh, you know during the uh, you know event as well which kind of underpins on your complete stlc life cycle and brings in the uh, required llm model to be executed so any client who is looking at aws engagement and like an accelerated story you have this uh, you know ai force at them and what we have also done is um, we have created what we call as an ai foundry which actually helps clients to consolidate the data architecture um how the data need to look like and what are those areas they need to focus on in terms of getting the data right so there is uh, no specific defined formula for it so we have created a holistic framework which kind of underpins many of this uh, aspects you know keeping in our experience of working with various landscapes and and created a strategy around it so we bring that uh, to the table so mm-hmm. that the client can actually focus on okay these are the gaps that i have and this is where the partnership of hcl tech and aws is going to build the story and stitch the story and uh, obviously is again underpinned and accelerated by the aws uh, services so these two are key focus areas and uh, what we do is we combine these two and prototype them in our ai labs mm. so we bring the ai labs we bring in the ai foundry and the ai force together to deliver a holistic service for the client organizations so this has been really helpful uh, mm. you know and and uh, my recommendation or suggestion to many of our cxo community is to look for your partners who has already done it look for areas where there are examples which has already been set and adopt some of those aspects um mm-hmm. is what i would uh, really suggest because many of the companies are already investing uh, quite a lot of money to create their own differentiating stories great um so uh what you mentioned definitely confirms one statistic that i remember that more than 90% of the organizations recognize that you need to establish data strategy um for generative ai but 57% of them has not changed in terms of really how to build the right data strategy to fit into the generative ai strategy so you and um partnership hcl and um aws um to really help our customers to accelerate that journey is really really important and second what you mentioned is also that um i i when i look across our customers and they need to learn from each other and they want to un- actually understand um you know what could be the right opportunities and um from there and help them to prioritize as well those opportunities and both looking at the short term gains but really most importantly the long term business strategy 
again, that very um, appreciate that our partnership can help our, all of our customers to on this journey and, um, and make the right choices. So as leaders, we always need to think about two, three years into the future. So what do you think would be generative AI's impact in the following two to three years? Uh, it's, it's definitely going to impact the business, um, either you believe it or not. If you look at when we started, if you look at 1990s and, you know, has been the era of mainframe modernization and all that, and the, and we progressed towards the .NET era and, and the internet boom, and, mm -hmm. you know, and 2010 onwards, it has been more of uh, iPhone era, I would call, which is more of uh, apps and digitization and services mm -hmm. and all that. So every decade, the enhancements has been significant, right? And 2020, if you look at, uh, you know, uh, the decade is much more focused on the AI cloud enablement digitization. I think the next decade is going to be uh, uh, generative AI. And uh, in fact, I would put it as more like AI, ML, quantum computing. Yeah. So all these aspects are going to significantly play and change the way we work and deliver uh, uh, on the ground. I think my my bet would be on that in terms of looking at the future and the conversations that is currently happening with the client base. Yeah, absolutely agree. Um, so I think the, for next decade, um, to your point, um, we are going to see processing um, information much, much faster, getting to the knowledge and the answers much, much faster. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.